News as the U.S. Supreme Court has made a bunch of big decisions that impact the nation. Joining us now is Mike Valerio for more on this. Hey, Mike. Hey, Ashley, and we're going to start with these seismic decisions on student loan forgiveness and affirmative action that are now poised to potentially impact higher education nationwide. As the proverbial dust settles around the United States Supreme Court following a contentious term, the immediate consequences for everyday Americans are becoming more clear. The Roberts Court these days is more eager to overturn older precedents than any court we've had at least probably in the last century. In striking down affirmative action programs at Harvard and the University of North Carolina, the court effectively determined colleges and universities can no longer expressly consider race in the admissions process. It prevents our higher education institutions from using a tool that helps promote diversity on campus. And while the court suggests the impact of an applicant's race in their life can still be taken into consideration, and proponents of ending affirmative action say it makes the process more fair, many fear diversity in higher education will suffer in the long term. Well, I'm very concerned about the morale that that is going to have on our minority youth. For those who are already in or have gone to college, the court also struck down President Biden's student loan debt cancellation program, a win for Republican-led states and conservatives who claimed it was illegal. We're talking about 40 million Americans that are going to be crushed by debt in just a few months. As the administration works to find a new approach to debt relief, the three-year pause on loan repayment started during the pandemic is soon expiring. Borrowers will have to resume paying their federal student loans in October, with interest set to begin accumulating again in September. The White House says, however, it will offer a 12-month on-ramp period for borrowers who are re-entering payment. And Ashley, the justices also sided with a Colorado-based web designer ruling that she has a First Amendment free speech right to deny her services to gay couples who could have been seeking out her services to make a wedding website. We say could have because they never did. She sent this lawsuit and drafted this lawsuit as a preemptive strike against a Colorado anti-discrimination law. The justices, though, the majority ruling that she could not be forced to engage in speech that is contrary to her religious beliefs, Ashley. Now, Mike, about that case, many people are asking, can business owners now deny service to certain people because of these free speech uh, protections? What do you think about that? Well, it's a difficult much more murky question to answer. Nobody has a definitive answer on that, Ashley. And it's because of the question of whether a business product is free speech or not. The designer in Colorado is saying here that her websites are her speech. That is why she says she cannot make a website for gay couples because that would be speech she doesn't agree with. But Justice Jackson during oral argument said, well, what about protecting this hypothetical free speech? Say that there is a Santa photographer at a mall somewhere across America and they're trying to have their product be retro, vintage photographs, black and white, looking like Santa photographs from the 40s and 50s, which would mean, according to their free speech and the vision for their product, no black children, excluding black families. Can we protect that kind of free speech? And the lawyer for the Colorado designer said, well, I don't really know. It's a hard line to draw. And Justice Jackson said, yes, it is now, based on that train of thought, a profoundly difficult line to draw. What is the limiting principle of speech? Conservative justices seem to be coalescing, Ashley, around the principle of if you're a, if you're a creative business, not like Home Depot or Walgreens or McDonald's that sell the same identical products. You have to sell to everybody if you sell identical products. But if your products are tied up in speech, in creativity, you can potentially deny your services to some people if it interferes with the kind of speech that you want to purvey, Ashley. It's a difficult, difficult yeah, question to answer that's, now. that's very interesting, Mike. Thank you for explaining that. And back to the affirmative action case, there seems to be a big exception in the majority opinion. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, and I'll keep it brief. It comes down to the college essay. Chief Justice John Roberts writing in the opinion for the majority that it could amount to a First Amendment challenge, a free speech challenge at that, if a college applicant could not write in the essay about their race. So in the college essay, it is not, you know, against the court's view that applicants 
should not be allowed to write about their race, where they came from. They can still do that. But race it can also be considered in military academies that is not off the table for military academies. It is expressly off the table in the application process. Colleges explicitly asking the racial question in the application pro uh, process for private and state universities across the country. All right, Mike Valerio joining us this afternoon. We always appreciate the time, Mike. Thank you. <laughs>